Starting from scratch here, so I'm not uh, opening any starter file. I'm just going to start a new project in Pompack. And you'll notice when you first create a, a new project, you get a little prompt here that asks if you want to create pre and post development scenarios for you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. And this is a little wizard here that makes it easier for you to create the information you need to analyze multiple return events. So for this demo, we're going to analyze a 10 year, 50 year, and 100 year scenarios. So the one thing I want to point out here is that when you're using this wizard with the modified rational method, you want to make sure to choose post development only. Because that's one of the other key differences between modified rational and unit hydrograph is that, um, as I pointed out earlier, you have both the pre and the post information in the same catchment. So there's no need to have separate scenarios for pre development conditions and post development conditions. That's something that you would do with the unit hydrograph method. So to help us uh, along with the process here, I'm just going to use this wizard. I'm going to say post development only. I'm going to remove the prefix. I'm just going to type in the names of the events that I want. So I'm going to type 10 year, enter, 50 year, 100 year, create. So if you're not familiar with scenarios and alternatives, uh, they're a very powerful feature in most of our products, uh, the hydraulics and hydrology products, that is. But uh, it can take a little time to get used to it, and that can sometimes um, you know, seem a little scary, but that wizard there makes it so that you don't have to worry about that for uh, most common pond design situations. So I'll just show you what that wizard created here. So if we go to the Scenarios Manager, that's this button here, or Analysis Scenarios. If I expand this, you'll see it created a 10, 50, and 100 year scenarios. And if we look over here on the properties, we can see the uh, rainfall runoff method is different between it. All other types of properties, these are the alternative types that basically store certain types of information and, ke and keep them separate between your scenarios. Everything else is the same. The only thing that's changing is the rainfall runoff. So that's where we, uh, that's where we set which uh, return event we're, we're modeling there. So in order to uh, set that rainfall information, we have to actually enter our design storm. So that's the next phase. So we go to components, storm data. And from here, I'm just going to import an existing uh, IDF curve that I have. So if you have some standard IDF information for your county, for example, you can store it in our engineering library and access that in any model so you don't have to re-enter it each time. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Just from this icon, import from library. Expand that, and here's my IDF storm bring that in. And that has a few more return events than I need, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete the 2-year, uh, the 5-year, and the 25-year. So here you have your IDF curves, uh, just your you know, intensity versus the duration. So you can see as the duration becomes larger, the intensity decreases. Uh, we get that relationship here. So in order to assign those return events to our scenarios, we use the global storm data uh, tool right here. This is Components Global Storm Data. So this is just a shortcut for assigning those storm events to our scenarios, or rather to our alternatives, which are then assigned to our scenarios. So for the 10-year alternative, I'm going to pick 10-year rainfall event, 50-year, 50-year, 100-year, 100-year. So if we look back at our scenario manager, if I go, for example, to the 50-year event, 50-year rain rainfall runoff alternative is selected. If I go to the Alternatives Manager, go to 50-year event, it has the 50-year assigned. Okay, one other thing I'm going to do here is just adjust our calculation options, and that's under Analysis, Calculation Options. Double-click on the default calculation option set. I'm just going to set the duration down to only four hours since the uh, modified rational method tends to you know, have a, a bit of a shorter duration. It, it starts right at time zero rather than, you know, with the unit hydrograph method, usually the peak of your storm is around 12 hours or so. So just to make things a little bit easier to view, I'm going to change that there. I'm also going to change the units on my time step to minutes and set the time step to one minute so we can see a little bit more detail. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually lay out our elements. So we're going to start with um, our catchment element. So that's the catchment here from the layout toolbar. And a shortcut if you um, don't want to actually draw out the, 
polygon to scale, you can actually hold down your control key and click, and then as you move your mouse around, it will draw a uh, pentagon shape for you. So I'm going to click again, and that lays out just a simple uh, schematic uh, view of your catchment. But uh, like I said, you know, if you do have maybe some shapefile information or some other data source that has the actual, you know, two scale polygons, you can bring those in. Um, you can move the, the vertices around as, as you want. Um, but for this, for this case, we're just going to do sort of a schematic view. Um, so here you can see the properties on the right side of our catchment. Uh, so what we're going to do here is set the runoff method to rational hydrograph, and then the rational method is modified rational. And outflow criteria basically determines whether you want to establish the pre-development target peak just by entering in a flow or by entering in a pre-development C area and TC. So I'm just going to go with, with the default here and actually enter the values. So in our pre-development conditions, uh, there's basically some existing land, so I'll call it existing land. C coefficient is pretty pretty low. I'm going to do a 0.3, so this is basically some a forest or woods or something that uh, that existed before we put in um, maybe a small um, parking lot or something like that. So this is going to be a two acre, a pretty small area, two acres. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then for our pre-development TC, I'm going to click in here. I'm going to do new. This is just going to be user defined. We do have a lot of different methods of calculating the TC, but I'm going to do user defined. And for the pre-development conditions, it's going to be 14 minutes. Okay, so again, the, the pre and the post information are entered at the same time. So the uh, post development information is below that. So the, the field called TC input type is determining how you enter the TC for the post development conditions. So in this case, it's user defined. So I just type in the number rather than selecting from that list of uh, different methods of computing the TC. So for the post development conditions, after we put in a parking lot, our TC is going to be a little less because we have pavement and it, you know, the water moves faster on the pavement. So I'm just going to estimate this as uh, eight minutes. And our C and area, it's going to be the same, uh, same area, but just a different infiltration property. So I'm going to say uh, impervious for the first item and the C coefficient is going to be 0.95, so that's basically our pavement. And that'll take up most of the area, 1.5 acres worth. And then also another line showing the, uh, the, imp the uh, pervious part of it, which I'm going to say is um, C coefficient of, let's say, 0.4, and an area of 0.5. So the, so the area adds up to what we had before, but uh, since we put in since we did some development, it uh, is not soaking up as much water into the ground, so we're going to have more runoff. So I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, next thing we want to do is lay out our pond. So this is uh, just going to go straight to our pond. I'll do the same thing, hold down Control key, click, just to draw a schematic view of that. OK, so what you want to do is back in the catchment properties, there's an outflow node field, and that's where you assign the outflow of the catchment to the pond. So I'm going to click the pond, and you see a little dashed line. Next thing, I'm going to draw my pond outlet structure. So that's under this tool, pond outlet. And if I click my pond outlet within the polygon of the pond, you'll notice there's now there's another little dashed line going to the pond outlet. So it automatically associated that pond outlet structure with the pond. And then, so what I'm drawing right now is a, is, is a link, a line link to where that pond outflow goes. So I'm going to right click, choose outfall as the node to lay out, do a single left click, and that lays out an outfall. Then right click, done. So for our design, we don't have uh, any pond dimensions or pond outlet uh, added yet. So for the pond properties, that's just going to stay as a no volume. And for our pond outlet link, I'm going to say it doesn't have a control structure yet. So it has control structure, no. And let's go ahead and compute this model, this is just going to show basically what happens uh, you know, before we do our pond design, just to give you an idea of what our uh, hydrographs look like. So from the scenario manager, this little drop down here, if you click batch run, this will run multiple scenarios at once. So I'm going to pick all three of our scenarios, click batch, yes. So that will run all three at once. And then if you right click on the catchment and choose graph, you can see your results here. So right now I'm looking at flow out of the catchment, 
for the 10 year event so I can check the 50 and 100 as well and click OK and then it's going to plot all three of those on the same graph. So you can see the, uh, the duration is pretty similar, maybe just a little bit different, but as you go from 10 to 50 to 100, the peak is increasing. So I'll just uh, keep that open for a moment and look back at the properties here. So if you scroll down in your catchment properties after you run, you'll see there's a time of duration. So this is our critical storm duration that we talked about, where Pompac goes ahead and figures out which storm duration results in the highest required storage volume given our pre-development peak and our post-development hydrograph. So, so that's a 22 minutes for our 10-year event. And as I switch to the 50-year event, notice that this changes here. So 20 minutes, a little bit different for our 50-year event. And then 100-year event, 21 minutes. So the duration, the critical durations are a little bit different between each event. You can kind of see that on the graph, but uh, roughly the same.